giant Yellowstone type mantle plume supervolcano is melting the Antarctica ice. NASA drops the stunning truth. We know that there are over a hundred volcanoes in Antarctica. Some of them are active. Even new ones are found. NASA discovers giant mantle plume that's melting Antarctica from below. Well, no wonder the glaciers are melting. The ice caps are melting. Well, we already know that Antarctica has over a hundred volcanoes and a lot of them are active. And now they have discovered a hot spot, a mantle plume melting Antarctica from below. This is on Disclosed TV by Valium. Antarctica has been in the news a lot recently with gloomy tales of the astonishing icy continent melting and uh, collapsing uh, parts of uh, the western part of the glaciers, calving sizes as big as uh, Rhode Island, as some people say. Collapsing because of the effects of climate change, they say. But nobody talks about the fact that they could be melting from underneath because of volcanoes. A supervolcano has been discovered underneath Antarctica. Supervolcano. But according to scientists in one particular area of the continent, something else is also at work. Researchers working for NASA discovered that there is a massive supervolcano underneath Mary Birdland in West Antarctica, which is generating almost as much heat as the infamous Yellowstone supervolcano and effectively melting the ice from underneath the earth. Can you imagine underground geysers, underground mud pops, underground whatever, fissures? The research team have uncovered an enormous amount of hot rock underneath Mary Bird land which lies between the gigantic Ross ice shelf and the Ross Sea. And according to the team, the heat surrounding this area is creating huge lakes and rivers underneath the ice sheet. This heat, they say, is being generated by a mantle plume. The mantle plumes are part of the anatomy of the supervolcano, which bring hot material from the interior to the earth to the surface. The region directly surrounding these mantle plumes is known as a hot spot and can cause a great deal of geographical instability. That hot, one of them is, of course, uh, in Hawaii, the recent Kilauea eruption. That is a hot, Hawaii is a hot spot. Now, this heat, they say, is being generated by the mantle plume, and mantle plumes are part of the anatomy of a supervolcano. Now, does that mean that Hawaii is part of a supervolcano? Well, who knows? That's for another topic and another time. So the anatomy of a supervolcano which bring hot material from the interior to the earth to the surface. The region directly surrounding these mantle plumes is known as a hot spot and can cause a great deal of geographical instability. And according to them, it's likely that the mantle plume is responsible for the ever-changing landscape in this particular region on Antarctica and is probably responsible for its rapid collapse towards the end of the last major ice age which took place about 11,000 years ago. The existence of a blazingly hot mantle plume existing under Mary Bird land is something which scientists have speculated about for about 30 years because of the unique conditions in this particular area of Antarctica and the domed feature of the landscape there. However, until now there has been no solid evidence to support this idea. This has all changed because of the work at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory who commenced the project because they were interested to know what was causing the instability in this area. According to the leader of the project, Helen Serusi, the team were actually initially skeptical about the idea that a mantle plume could be causing the unique conditions. She said that she found the idea crazy. She said, I didn't see how we could have that amount of heat and still have ice on top of it, she said. But the team created a huge number of advances, advanced numerical models to calculate how much heat would be needed to generate underneath the thick ice 
the ice sheet in order uh, to account for the global, the, the geological anomalies, such as the domed appearance of the landscape and the lakes and rivers in the bedrock, and eventually they came to the conclusion that there simply had to be a mantle plume in this area. And once they had come to that conclusion, it was likely that they were dealing with a mantle plume the team dispatched to Yellowstone. And they did that to analyze the geothermal heat created by the supervolcano and found that it was comparable to the amount of heat being generated in Mary Bird land. At Yellowstone, around 200 milliwatts is generated per square meter every single hour by the heat of the volcano. In Mary Bird land, approximately 150 milliwatts that's about 50 milliwatts less is generated than the Yellowstone in the same space of time. The scientists note that if the supervolcano underneath Antarctica was any hotter, then it would certainly melt the ice in the surrounding area. The team believes that the mantle plume is coming from a rift in the Earth's crust and that it is likely that this particular rift and mantle plume formed between 50 and 100 and 10 million years ago, prior to the region having been covered with ice. According to the research team, these investigations could prove that uh, to be acu uh, acutely important in the future. As scientists endeavor to understand the nature of the landscape of Antarctica and attempt to make predictions about how it will evolve and change in the future, is kind of information, and this kind of information is absolutely essential. And let's not forget that Admiral Byrd, when he went to uh, uh, Antarctica for his expedition, said that there were areas in Antarctica that were like Arizona, in that they were warm, uh, and that there were also uh, lakes that were warm enough to swim in. So you can imagine, and he was obviously talking about something warming up the uh, ground, the area, the atmosphere above the ground, and obviously there were geothermal lakes. Uh, so that's wonderful. I mean, there's, the more they examine Antarctica, the more they find. So we'll have more on this. Breaking news, NASA drops global warming truth bomb and people are stunned. Progressive global warming activists will be disappointed at this recent revelation. A new NASA study has found that a geothermal heat source underneath the ice caps, consisting of heated rock and volcanic activity is the reason why the ice caps are melting and not global warming. So that's a huge difference as to why we're getting melting of the poles. Scientists have long speculated that a geothermal heat source called a mantle plume lies directly underneath a significant portion of Antarctica. This recent study, however, has explained how the ice sheet collapses so rapidly in an earlier era of rapid climate change and why the ice mass is so unstable today. Quote, I thought it was crazy, unquote, said Helene Serusi, the study's co-author and scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Quote, I don't see how we could have that amount of heat and still have ice on top of it, end quote. She said in an official statement, they found the level of geothermal energy from the mantle plume to be around 150 milliwatts per square meter. In comparison, under Yellowstone National Park, a geothermal hotspot produces about 200 milliwatts per square meter average throughout the entire park. So you can imagine, that's just about as hot as Yellowstone is. Mantle plumes are thought to be narrow streams of hot rock rising through the Earth's mantle and mushrooming out underneath the crust. First theorized in the 1970s, the idea was offered to explain how geothermal activity 
could occur far away from the boundaries of tectonic plates. However, proof regarding the validity of the mantle plume theory has been accumulated, accumulating for years. In 2014, researchers at the University of Texas found that Western Antarctica was a hotbed of geothermal activity, a conclusion confirmed by a team of U.S. scientists one year later. Quote, the high geothermal heat flux may help to explain why ice streams and subglacial lakes are so abundant and dynamic in this region, end quote. That's what the study found. Even earlier this year, Scottish researchers found 91 previously unknown volcanoes underneath the Antarctic ice sheet. Some are over 13,000 feet tall, further collaborating this body of evidence. Scientists and global warming activists have been especially concerned regarding the melting of the ice caps, a recent discovery that a Delaware-sized chunk of ice split off from the ice sheet causing alarm throughout the scientific community. Chris Mooney from the Washington Post said that this change could draw further attention to the threat of climate change at a time when President Trump is considering whether to exit the Paris Agreement to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Many other publications, such as The Guardian and Business Insider, published articles to a similar effect. Some scientists, such as Helen Amanda Fricker, don't concur with the mainstream appraisal of man-made climate change impact on ice caps. Quote, Glaciologists are not alarmed about most of these processes. They are examples of Antarctica simply doing what we know Antarctica has done for thousands of years, she writes. Many might recall a video from famed meteorologist John Coleman, founder of the Weather Channel, where he spoke at length on the topic of how man-made global warming does not exist and that the climate change complex is a scam. Although controversial at the time, his sentiments are slowly beginning to become accepted as truth by some of the American public. NASA's recent finding is another piece of evidence against the liberal progressive climate change doomsday scenario. So that's a big difference from what we, they thought up to now. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.